Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Salty Roots. Today we're going to change out the membrane on this BRS 75 gallon per day RODI unit. And then while I'm at it, I'm also gonna run a couple of tests on my source water. I've learned a few things here in these last few days. And so if you're here just to see how to change the membrane now, I will put the time down in the description where you can quickly jump to that point. Otherwise, um, if you're curious to know some of the things that I've learned and um, you know, drill down into the source water and some of the reasons that uh, I'm losing you know, um, the efficiency of some of my filters um, at different rates, stick around for those first few minutes and uh, we'll find out. So we've always known since we moved in that the water quality in this area of St. Augustine isn't great. Um, that's of course relative to what you're used to and what you'd consider to be bad water quality or good water quality. Um, but we went ahead and got this rain soft water treatment system installed proactively before we moved in. And um, this is much more than a water softener. This is a full water treatment system. And then I hooked my RODI unit up to what I thought was treated water coming out of this um, and come to find out it actually was not. I was ripping through the filters way faster than I thought. So I had the Rainsoft tech the last time he was out kind of test my hose bibs on the side of the house. And the one I was using again actually wasn't going through here. And so I've since switched my RODI unit over to one of the hose bibs that is going through this system, um, hoping for some better results. Um, all that now known to me um, has led me to want to run a couple of tests on the TDS. And so what I'm going to do are a few things. Um, we're on a shared community well system essentially is where the water is coming from, um, the original source water. And so I'm going to test the TDS of that water straight from the, um, the community well. And then I'm going to test the TDS of the water coming out of, these, out of this Rainsoft water treatment system. I'm going to test the TDS water that's currently coming out of what I believe is my exhausted membrane um, on the RODI unit. And then lastly, test the TDS of the water um, coming out of the new replaced um, membrane on the RODI unit. All right, so before I run um, these tests, I think it's important to note how this RODI um, system works. As you can see, I have the digital TDS meter from bulk resupply hooked up. And it's pretty straightforward. And so the water comes in right here. It goes through three filters, a sediment, a sediment filter and two carbon blocks. After the carbon block, it comes out and then that feeds into my membrane. And then coming out of my membrane, I am currently measuring the TDS water there because I want to know how much this membrane has stripped, um, essentially what is left for my DI resin to then remove. So that's currently how I have it set up. Um, and what I'm going to do is measure before it gets to this membrane. It's okay that I'm still letting the water go through the sediment into carbon blocks because those actually do not remove TDS. And so I'll let the water still go through there and then I will hook it up prior to going to this membrane. That'll give me the TDS of the actual source water. Both, um, I'll run that test twice. Um, first through just the original source water coming directly from that neighborhood community well and then I'll run it again on the water coming out of that rain soft water treatment system. So in order to get that source water number, I do have to make a slight modification of my current setup because like I said, I'm currently measuring the level of the TDS after the membrane um, and I want to measure it before. So it's pretty simple. Um, the water after these three filters comes through this red tube here. And so instead of sending it through the membrane, all I'm going to do is push to disconnect here I'm going to connect it at this spot here. So that way the water is coming directly out of those three filters and then getting measured right away. All right, so as you can see, we've switched up our tubing here and we've placed the inlet to measure the TDS of the water prior to the membrane. And that water coming from the neighborhood community well is actually measuring quite high at uh, around 290 to 293 is what it's been going back and forth from. So for me, that's really high. Some of you may even have higher than that, but um, I've never measured the source water. And so that's a pretty big number. All right, so coming over to this side of the house, this is the hose that I found out is going through the rain soft system. And so I currently have it hooked up. Let's take a look at what our TDS is after the rain soft system, but before the membrane, because we still have it hooked up that way. So it brings it down a little bit, um, down into uh, the 270s. I was expecting it to be a lot more. So looks like the rain soft system helps, but uh, not as much as I thought it was going to. 
All right, so I have the unit hooked up to the hose bib that I now know is not going through the rain soft water treatment system. So this is directly from the neighborhood community well system. It's coming through my RODI unit and then going through the exhausted membrane. And then after that, we have it coming in right around, it hovers between eight and nine. All right, so I have the RODI hooked back up where it's measuring the TDS of the water after our exhausted membrane, as well as going through the water treatment system, the rain soft system, and it goes down to about six. So just slightly lower than um, the water coming directly from the neighborhood community well after the membrane. So all in all, the rain soft seems to help out just a tiny bit, um, certainly not as much as I thought. So that being said, I still am going to run the water through the rain soft system first. Um, regardless of how much TDS it does or does not take out, I still think the cleanup that it's doing in general is going to extend the life of these first three filters um, quite a bit, especially this first sediment filter. So we'll still use it, um, but it was still interesting to find that and find out that information. So when it comes to the membrane, this really is the workhorse of the RODI unit. Um, most membranes are going to have a rejection rate of 96 to 98%, meaning it's rejecting 96 to 98% of the total dissolved solvents. So it's really important that you keep up on the maintenance of this membrane and replace it as needed. How to know when to replace it is um, the most precise way is to calculate the current rejection rate. And it's pretty easy to do. You just need two numbers. We have both of those numbers from our test earlier. So you need to know the level of TDS of the water coming in prior to the membrane and then the level coming out. Um, what you're going to do is subtract the level coming out from the level coming in, take that number, divide it back by the original number coming in, multiply that by 100. So grabbing our numbers from earlier, we know that the water was coming in at 293. It was coming out at 9. 293 minus 9 is 284. So then we're going to take 284 divided by the original 293 times 100 gives us 96.9% um, rejection rate, which is pretty crazy. I've never replaced that membrane. It's original, I think six or so years old. Still working. Um, perfectly was not expecting that and then when it comes to the rain soft system it was coming in to this unit after the rain soft at 276 coming out after the membrane at 6 276 minus 6 270 270 divided by 276 times 100 is 97.8 percent rejection rate well, i guess shout out to dow you make a great uh, membrane now i never did this experiment back in indianapolis and so maybe just this Maybe the source water was great and it had a huge effect on it. Um, not sure, but again, just totally was not expecting those numbers. So really don't need to replace the membrane, but I already have one. I guess moral of the story, run this test before you go ahead and purchase it. They're not super expensive, but they're around $50, just under 50 bucks. And I would have been fine. Um, but again, since I have um, the membrane already, I'll go ahead and, and replace it and um, go from there. So the first thing you need to do is remove this membrane housing. Um, and to do that, you want to disconnect your tubing. Highly recommend taking a picture of how all the tubing, tubing is currently set up prior to removing it. Um, so disconnect those, remove the uh, housing. Next step, you want to go ahead and unscrew the cap. Since you replaced the cap, you want to take out the old membrane. Slides right out. Have your new membrane. All right, so when you have your new membrane, the end is going to be here with the two small O-rings. You want those to go in first. So you have your housing, two small O-rings are gonna go in first. Tucks right in there. Put your cap back on. Easy as that. Pop it back in, replace all your hosing. So once you have this back in and all connected, you want to discard about one to three gallons of this just to redo, remove any of the resin from the new filter, and then you'll be good to go. So we got our new membrane installed, so we need to let it produce about one to three gallons of water, um, discard any resin, and then we will rerun all of our tests with the new membrane. All right, so I have the brand new membrane installed, and after seeing those numbers, didn't really anticipate 
seeing much of a change considering the old membrane was doing just fine at 96 plus percent uh, rejection but um, hooked it up anyway and as anticipated we're right around eight or nine with the new membrane so pretty much the exact same membrane um, the new membrane obviously has no effect on the source water prior to the membrane so that number is going to be the same ultimately giving us right about 96 um, plus percent rejection well, you see the line in the intro of all my videos, be successful faster, learn from the experiments and some of the things that I do here. Um, if you're gonna, or at least thinking about going out and getting a brand new membrane just because you've had yours for a few years, run this test first. You may well need a new membrane. I don't know where you're currently located or what your water's like, but you may run the test and be surprised to find that it's still at 96 to 98% um, and do it just fine. Save yourself a few bucks.